Hello, calligraphy lovers. Welcome to Calligraphy Basics 101. This is my version of how to get yourself started with kanji calligraphy properly, from materials, preparation, gesture, basic strokes, and some common mistakes to avoid. So let's start. This is the ink stone, and it's called that because it's made of stone and where you store ink. Not much mystery here. Second, we have the ink stick. And ink. You can either use ink stick to grind your ink, or just buy ready-made ink. And next we have the brush. I'm using a middle-sized brush with wolf hair. And last but not least, paper, or more precisely, rice paper. These are the four essential materials for Chinese kanji calligraphy, or as the Chinese call them, wenfang si bao, four treasures. There are other tools and materials, but today we'll simply focus on the essentials. Once the materials are here, we need to do some prep works before writing. First off, the ink. The easy way is to use ready-made ink, or maybe we can call it fast ink, like fast food or fast fashion, with a modern obsession with fast everything, right? I personally prefer to use ink stick with water. Usually, two teaspoons of water is enough for about fifty characters. The practice of kanji calligraphy, be it Chinese or Japanese, slows down your motion and thoughts, not just when writing, but the entire process, from grinding ink to washing brush. I can't say for everyone, but most kanji calligraphers I know are more or less even-tempered. That's because this can act as a form of meditation. So don't rush through the grinding part. Take this rare opportunity and just slow down and let loose of your thoughts, or simply follow the trace of your ink stick and see how the water gradually darkens. If you haven't filled the zen yet. No worries. It's time to soak the brush with the ink you just made. But first, you gotta know how to sit on a horse before riding one, or something better phrased. What I mean is, you need to know the right way to hold your brush. It's very important if you want to better control your motion. So let's start with one hand holding the top end of the brush. Put the hand that you write with under the brush, palm facing in. Roughly align the top knuckle of your middle finger with the body of the brush. Now clamp the body of the brush with your middle and ring finger. Attach your index finger and thumb naturally to the body of the brush. Feel free to pause or rewind the video to follow my gesture as much as you can. Grip the brush just firmly enough to not slip off your fingers. Don't try to snap it before you even write it. Now you can soak the brush with ink and soak it well. Flip the brush in the ink a few times to soak up enough ink. The center of the brush shouldn't be dry, but once you are done, remember to scrape some off on the edge of the ink stone. Otherwise, the ink might drip down onto the paper. If you find this soothing, leave a comment so I know I'm not the only one here. With that, we're almost there. Now let's get the paper ready. During the whole process of writing, you need to sit up straight and keep your body as stable as you can. And make sure you hold the brush right. Can't keep my mouth shut on that one, can I? Okay, now dip the brush in the ink and scrape some off. Relax. But if you're nervous, just take a deep breath. You'll get over this as you write. Let's begin with a simple horizontal stroke. Try to keep your brush as straight as you can. And the vertical one. Guess what? You just wrote a character. It's the number ten in kanji. Wasn't too hard, was it? It's just a cross of these two strokes. But did it come out the way I wrote it, or did you notice my pace and change of motion? Don't worry if you didn't. Let me just show you the two strokes in steps. Remember, I said to keep the brush straight. 
That's because for this style of calligraphy, we need to keep the strokes thin and fine. So we need to use the tip of the brush. The brush hair is the writing part. So let's say the belly is here and the tip is here. We want to use the tip instead of the belly. And now I'll show you the steps of these seemingly simple strokes, starting with the horizontal one. In this one, we have three parts, landing, dragging, and finishing. The pressure of the brush also varies when doing this stroke. Let me demonstrate. For the first part, press down, and drag the brush, lift, press down, and hook back a little. All these motions should be very subtle, otherwise it might appear rough. Especially the start and the finish. The transitions during these steps should be as smooth as possible. The vertical strokes has two steps, not three. The landing and dragging. However, the dragging has a finishing in itself. Instead of a rounded finishing at the end of the horizontal stroke, this is a sharp one. But the motion at the finishing part should be slow, almost like pushing the tip out bit by bit. Just like the horizontal stroke, the rough motions will result in rough strokes. Especially the start and the finish. The transition should be kept as subtle as possible, so that the stroke appears smooth. That's a lot more information than you expected, isn't it? Let's try this one more time, but this time slower starting with a horizontal stroke. Landing gently and drag, lift, press down, small hook. Next vertical, landing, press down, drag, slowly pushing the tip out and finish. So you see it's not so easy and I understand it might seem intimidating and off-putting but if you're really into practicing calligraphy, it doesn't get much harder than this. Once you master these two, it's smooth sailing. And you'll see just how calming calligraphy is. So stay tuned for my calming tutorials on Chinese kanji calligraphy. Cheers! Now, the last part. It wouldn't be my video if I didn't have English words written in Chinese kanji calligraphy. So I'll show you how to write English word Number 10. And that's it guys, my calligraphy basics 101. Hope this was helpful. Till next time, ciao.